Guys, what's up? And, and girls, and uh, agenders, androgen, bigender, gender to queer, non binary, gender bender, hygiera, pangender, third gender. There's a long list, but I want to include everybody. I'm not making fun. I just I want to make sure that in 2018, I'm very politically correct here. I looked up the list. I got to run to the parts store today. I think what's going to happen today is I'm going to go ahead and get started on the snorkel for the wagon. I don't know if I'll get it completely hooked up, but I want to at least have it mounted to the fender. I'll go through the steps of this so it's, instead of more of a vlog type, this will be more of a how-to type with a little bit of vlog into it because I like that style. Anyway, guys. So a quick disclaimer, if you're installing a snorkel and you plan on actually using it and burying yourself up to, I don't know, this deep or whatever it may be, two quick tips. If you're gonna do some deep mud in your wagon or Civic or whatever you have that you're installing your snorkel on, the things to consider are relocating your ECU. You can actually bring it up higher. The water will slosh there and it will fry your ECU. A second consideration is to go ahead and waterproof your alternator. There's plenty of waterproofing jellies and whatnot that you can put on the connector of the alternator and pack it so it's more water resistant. I haven't done a lot of research into that yet, but I would strongly suggest that if you're going to actually do some deep mudding. I put my snorkel on as precautionary just in case I come to a deep water crossing or if I come to an area where I wouldn't feel safe crossing because I have drowned my wagon before. This is to get some people off my back for a mistake I made and peace of mind when I'm out there in the woods, you know, off somewhere and I come to a water crossing that I've got to get across. But anyway guys, back to the normal video. So I've got the fender off here. I took it off in that last week's video and looking at it optimally through the fender I would be able to cut it through here shut the fuck up bird optimally where the uh, fender lines up I'd like to be able to put the hole here but as you can see this frame rail here kind of runs along there so I think the best option is going to be is to cut out my three and a half inch hole saw right here and open it up and run the some kind of a little bit of pipe to here got the snorkel I'm gonna go ahead and cut this because I know that I want this out of the way and that'll let me get the fender on and figure out where I need to cut the fender because what I may end up having to do is I may have to trim this back to run to the snorkel and I think for a rain setup if I'm just driving normally I'd like to just bypass the snorkel and just run the filter just like normal and if you're curious about this pre-filter this just keeps uh, water and dust out of there and it works pretty well I used this was actually off the element for a while and I decided to put the wagon just to keep water out of there because, you know, my history with water and wagons. Whenever you're getting your snorkel set up and how you want to route it, you can use what I'm doing. I've got actually, I actually bought a drop-in filter to go into the snorkel and it drops in like a sock and it rolls over the edges and the, the uh, snorkel head will actually keep it on. Or you can use your existing air box and route the snorkel into there and seal off your air box from uh, water and all that other stuff and run just a drop in filter. So anyway, I'm gonna start cutting these uh, zip ties off and pop the filter off and kind of see where I'm at. You know, a quick comprehensive review on this uh, $26 eBay intake. I'm actually impressed. I popped it off for the first, this is the first time I've ever had it off. I don't know if you can see in there, but I mean, it is really clean. Like, I've been through some stuff with this thing. <laughs> it's been in a lot of very dusty situations. The inside of the pipe, everything is very clean. Filter's in good shape. You know, I was, I was running this this pair and pre-filter on there, but yeah, it, it helps out a little bit, but I'm pretty impressed. $26 air intake. All right, so now looking at it, I do have a little relay right here. I guess that's probably for the headlight relay. I'm gonna go ahead and unbolt that first before I go drill through there because that's gonna pretty much go right, the hole saw is gonna chew right through that. Cause I mean, look at the size of that hole saw. It's a three and a half inch big mamma jamma. And what I ended up doing is I took it off the firewall right here and I just moved it. There, there's a residual bolt hole there for a 10 millimeter. So I just ended up moving it there. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and start opening this hole up right here. All right, our hole is opened up. If you're going to go this way and do the three and a half inch, be very, very careful when you're cutting this because this is this is a lot of material removed. And that's, as you saw me going through it, it, it'll it catch and it will try to break your wrist. So be warned, don't try to go in there and grill that sucker in there because that, that is a lot of meat you're taking out in one bite. 
All right, I got that painted. It'll help it from uh, rusting so much. Hopefully not at all. That's looking pretty good. I'm gonna go get the uh, snorkel pipe and a couple of uh, extra little things I've got and see if I can start mocking up how I wanna run it. And then I'll look at the fender about how I wanna cut it up. So this is unexpected. I, I was hoping this would come in today. Overnight parts from Australia. Well, not overnight, like two weeks, but. Hayden Gooch. Thank you, Gooch. Unifilter Australia. So that filter I was talking about earlier, this is this is that filter. This is three of those filters. Oh, they're oiled too. I know what you're thinking. It does kind of look like one of those. So yeah, it just drops down in there. You see how it sits nice and flush on top of that. And then you put your, put your cap on it. And then once you put your cap on, you put your clamp on that bracket and it holds it all down and that's that's essentially your filter. And I couldn't find these anywhere in the United States. I looked all over the, I searched the interwebs far and wide and the only place I sold them was Uni, Uni Filter in Australia, which Uni Filter is actually what I use in my four wheeler as well. It's a great brand, it's a great filter, but I couldn't figure out why they don't sell these drop-in filters for snorkels here in America. So I've got the fender sitting up here now and I'm gonna, it looks like it lines up pretty well here. It looks like it's gonna be a little lower here. The cool thing with this uh, snorkel I got came with this template and I'm going to use this template to kind of rearrange and see how I want to set it because it'll look need to be a little bit right there and I'll make my snorkel kind of kick up a little bit but I think that'll still be fine. Damn it. It's a reoccurring theme on this channel that I get the shit backwards a lot. Now the bolt holes are aligned correctly. I am going to put a couple of these fender bolts back in just to hold it because it's kind of flimsy when you push on it. So I'm going to put one here and a couple up here. So when I drill, it won't flex so bad. I could, I could run a pilot hole in there, but I think I'll be fine. If I feel like it's going to start skating on me, then I'll stop and I'll run a pilot hole, but I think it'll be all right. All right, well, I've got this template up here. Before I take it down and I start painting the hole that I just opened up, I'm gonna go ahead and center punch these so I can drill those out. And then that way I can go ahead and get everything ready to mount the uh, snorkel. Now what I'm gonna go ahead and do since I have it, is I'm gonna go ahead and deburr these holes just so they're just so they're not sharp. I have a new deburr tool that I haven't had a chance to use yet, so I'm gonna grab that. This deburr here, you can see it's got a lot of flutes. And the more flutes it has, the easier it cuts. So that cuts pretty well. I was just able to put it in there and put a turn into it and it was good to go. So I highly recommend one of those. I'll, I'll see if I can't find a link if anybody wants one of these. Now I'm gonna go ahead and do is install this hardware. Straight threaded shaft and it just threads into these. So my main worry in all this it's kind of rearing its ugly head right now because now I can see where I'm going to have a problem. If you can't see, that's definitely not a straight shot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and notch this in order to have my clearance I need where we're at. I cleaned off this dust here and you can see that's about where, that's where my fender hole is. I just kind of beat that fender rail, that frame rail there, and it it opened up a lot, definitely. I'm gonna try the uh, fender on there and see if that's good enough or if I need to clear it a little bit more. I'm glad I didn't have to cut it out. I really just didn't want to cut that up. Yeah, I knocked that uh, frame rail up out of the way and it's, it's pretty good now. I'm really happy that was easier than I thought it was gonna be. So a quick tip here when you're putting these on, is I was able to get these top three bolts to feed through and uh, I was able to push the fender onto them and they, they're they tight, but they went on. But these bottom ones are just a hair off, as you can see there. And I'm gonna have to open the clearance up. You can see I marked there on the fender where I need to open up. That one and this one needs to be opened up just a little bit more there as well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull that snorkel back off, open those holes up a little bit more with the drill bit. That way I can bolt these, I can put the nuts on the back. 
but I was having problem pulling this off because that fender is now, it's pretty much become a washer onto those uh, studs. So what I'm doing, and since they're keyed, I can just go ahead and back them off from here. I can put my Allen head on here and just back these back out completely, kind of like I did with this one here. I just backed it completely out. That way I can remove this fender, put a little touch up paint in these holes where I drilled through just to keep them from uh, rusting up. Go ahead and paint this hole too, keep it from rusting up. I don't think that bottom one's going to line up because it's a little bit gapped out, so I'm, I'm not worried about that bottom one. But all the rest of the bolts are going to fit up just fine. But anyway, that's a quick tip for that. There's no doubt my thumb is going to get spray painted in this. God. Let me immediately. I'm going to go ahead and let that air dry a little bit before I go ahead and put the snorkel back on. But I'm going to go ahead and get everything else primed up and see kind of plumbing wise how I want to run that. But I'll show you back when I get the fender back on. You know, it's easy to hate on cheap Chineseium eBay parts, but when they put a good quality lock nut in the kit, that just makes my engineering soul very happy. The indigenous barking spider, native to Arkansas. Now whether that made a lick of difference or not, I don't think so. I mean, it's not, obviously it's not back far. I was able, I could see the ABS plastic moving a little bit. The verdict on that, not really worth it. You can try if you want to get a little more brave and get some more heat into it. If you have a second person, you may be able to muscle it back a little bit better, but it's honestly not that bad. So when I was trying to bolt the fender up, a lot of the holes were having some problems bolting up and I found out what the problem was. You can see there's pretty good tension right there in that elbow. So what I'm going to do is I want to open up this radius here a little bit more. I'm going to take that fender back off and hopefully that should give me enough clearance to get back in there. So basically what I did is I opened up this radius a little bit here. I went ahead and painted it. I know I probably prematurely painted that, but I think that'll give me a little bit more relief so that fender will bolt up better. I had, you know, when I did the hole saw there, I only did exactly three and a half inches. So it was constrained to being straight at a linear point path there. So maybe this will give a little bit more room to flex up and head toward my intake pipe. I cut it. I don't know if you noticed when I was cutting it, but I cut it straight into it so that I could fold it back when I hammered it, not just, you know, hog it out like I would normally do. And that actually worked really well. I just got the big hammer and just tapped it all back and it folded back pretty easily. Now, as far as installing this filter, it literally just drops in the end here. And it's already pre-oiled from Uni, so that's pretty awesome. Just drops in and sits on top like that. You can get your breather basket thing. Go ahead and tighten your clamp down. On this video, I'm not going to go super into detail how to hook your snorkel directly into your intake pipe because that's something you're going to have to figure out on your own. Every, every Everyone's application is going to be a little bit different. And mine's no different because, like I said, I have this cheap eBay air intake, and I'm going to order a elbow that's just a 90 degree silicone elbow that I can put on there. And I'm going to probably open up that clearance a little bit more because you can see it's kind of pushing that intake pipe down from the uh, snorkel. But uh, yeah, guys, that's pretty much it. I'm going to go ahead and finish mocking up the fender flare how it's going to look on this side. But besides that, it's looking pretty sweet. I'm, I'm digging it.
And before I wrap this video, I was actually able to go to Little Rock this weekend. And while I was in Little Rock, I went to Advanced Auto, grabbed some uh, DIY air intake kits. And I picked up a, uh, just a little 90 here. A 90 and a, just a, and one straight coupler. And I think that I can put that there, put that 90 in there and kind of push that in the pipe, put the hose clamp that came, it'll, this, this will actually feed inside the rubber pipe that comes in there. And this will go over the end of this and then over the air intake. So I'm probably gonna try that, but I won't do it in this video. Also, check this out. I thought this is kind of funny. It's like a D17 Civic, like a early 2000s model. Like these crazy dual air intakes and like ram air intake pipes. So extreme. On there. It looks pretty good. Yeah, it sits on there pretty good. Yeah, I trimmed the fender flare and the trim and all that stuff to fit up in there and still be able to run the fender flare with it. Well, the front's getting close to being done. So yeah guys, not super vloggy like my most videos, but uh, wanted this to be more of kind of like a how-to video so I can kind of send it out to some other people that haven't seen my channel yet and really aren't, you know, following me just yet. Hopefully it'll be pretty functional. I'll go bury this up eventually. But yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this video up. Go ahead and put up all my tools because uh, I got a bunch of stuff going on this weekend. So there'll be a couple more videos coming out this week. So until next time, guys, peace.